Hi everyone, welcome back to the AI language. So today I'm going to talk about this new uh, agentic IDE which is called Kiro. So it's basically a VS Code fork and uh, I'm right now on Kiro.dev on the about page. Yeah, and as you can see on this page, so Kiro is built and operated by a small opinionated team within AWS. So um, this is uh, what it is and it's named Kiro because it rhymes with hero because among other meanings, it represents a hardworking person who never gives up. All right, so that's that's Kiro for you developed by AWS and uh, there's a preview version available right now. So you can go to Kiro.dev and you have an option for downloading it for your system. So I am going to download it for my system by clicking on Apple Silicon over here. One more thing about Kiro is that in preview, it offers free access to Sonnet 4, which is one of the best coding models out there. And this might be because of Amazon's significant investment in Anthropic. So they might be able to have some synergy over there and handle their pricing well. So that's great for developers because you get access to this great model for free for now. So once it's downloaded, you can click on the DMG file and drag Kiro to your applications folder over here. And then you can close this and go to your finder, go to your applications and then let's look for Kiro over here. So here we have it and let's double click this to open it. So I'm going to click on open over here because I just downloaded this file and this is going to open Kiro for us. So this is the agentic ID that helps you do your best work and it's called Kiro and it's a VS code folks. So I'm going to just sign in with Google. You can sign in with whatever, um, you know, ID you choose over here. All right. So once you sign in, you'll see a success message like that. You can import your configuration from VS code. All right. So let me try this. This is useful because it will install all the extensions that I have set up already in VS Code and I don't need to set them up again. So once the extensions are set up, you can choose a theme. I'm going to choose the dark theme over here and let's click on continue. And then uh, this integrates Kiro with your shell and allows you to open any project from your terminal. So let's set up shell as well. And I'm going to click OK over here. So you need to enter your admin password over here to install that and now I have set up shell command Kiro. So it's successfully installed in the path variable and let's click OK over here. All right, so as I open this, I also have a welcome screen from Gemini Code Assist. I think this is because this is already installed in my VS Code and it has imported that. So let me foreclose this for now because we are wanting to look at Kiro, right? All right, so over here we have the option to open a project. Uh, from recent projects, we can select something. We don't have anything right now over here or we can clone a repository or we can click on connect to and let's see what this has. So it has some remote destinations. Please install an SSH in extension to list options. All right. So for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to maximize this and we can see that this is the familiar VS code user interface. Uh, you have the explorer over here. So you can click on open folder and let me create a new folder over here and let's call this Let's call this Kiro landing page and let's click on create. So I have this folder and let me now open this folder in Kiro. Let me trust the authors over here and select yes, I trust the authors. So this is the starting screen for Kiro and it basically gives you two options. So one is to wipe code so that you chat first and then you start building and basically explore ideas and iterate as you discover the needs. Let me zoom this in a bit so that you can see this clearly. And the other option is for specs. So you can see that there are specs over here and what this allows you to do is, it allows you to plan your features in a structured way and then build them. So there's basically requirements and design that you have to specify and then a list of tasks. You can specify that under specs and then start creating. There's the chat box over here and you have Claude Sonnet 4.0. All right, so then we have autopilot over here and this allows Kiro to run large tasks without needing step-by-step -step instructions. And as it says over here, Kiro will also make changes on your behalf. So this is this part of the starting screen for Kiro. So apart from the specs, you also have agent hooks and agent steering docs over here, along with MCP server integrations. So beginning with MCP server integrations, you might want to integrate uh, the MCP server for GitHub 
or let's say for searching online using fetch so you can do all that over here you have agent steering docs over here which will basically guide your agent behavior and responses so for example you could add files for describing context over here for describing the coding standards you want Kiro to follow or to describe some other preferred workflow that you want it to follow so this is what will steer the behavior of Kiro the way you want it and that's what this section is meant for and then you have agent hooks so agent hooks are a way of triggering some repetitive task based on some condition so you might say that you know whenever my code changes you need to update the documentation for it or you want to update the readme file etc so that's what agent hooks will help us with and all this is available through the Kiro menu over here. So this is the new menu in the VS Code fork that they have developed. And when I click over here, I can see that I have the GitHub Copilot chat over here and I have the Gemini Code Assist over here because this is what has been imported from my VS Code version. So actually I can use v uh, Gemini Code Assist over here if I wanted to. But for now, uh, I'm just going to let it be and focus on Kiro for now. So let me first add a simple hook over here. So let's click on the plus button over here and this opens the create new hook window over here. Let me close this new session from here and um, let's read through this. So it basically looks for events that occur and uh, hooks listen for an event to occur such as file creation, file save or file deletion. And then the prompt is sent to the agent. The agent receives a prompt in the background to execute a pre-written task on uh, files in your app. And then Kiro makes updates. So Kiro is invoked and takes actions to automatically update files in your workspace. So let me describe a hook using natural language over here. And let's use update my documentation. So listen to all sources, listen to all source files in this repository. For example, if this is a TypeScript project, listen to dot uh, ts files start.ts files and if this is a python uh, listen to start.py also listen to relevant specific other files or other pattern that are related to the source on changes on uh, on these files ask the agent to make change to docs in either the readme or if there's a specific slash docs folder update there too all right and, and let me add you know if the readme file does not exist it all right so so this is the hook that i have and uh, let me press the send button over here or the enter button over here all right so it says it's working on it and you have this animation for kiro that's working on your hook and it says the hook has been created successfully it will monitor source code files across multiple programming languages and automatically trigger documentation updates whenever changes are detected so great we have created our documentation sync hook over here using one of the examples that uh, Kiro already had for us so let's leave it like this and let's go ahead to agent steering and other aspects of Kiro and let's see if that works well for our use case so now we have agent steering so let's click on plus over here so let me put a coding standard doc over here All right, so uh, this is going to be a document that's going to talk about our coding standards and it says add rules to this file for a short description and have Kiro refine them for you. All right, cool. So let me add a coding standard over here. So uh, let's just put one simple standard over here that all code should have detailed comments as to the purpose of a file on the top of the file and then commence with each line or part explaining what that part does so let me just add this particular thing over here and ask it to refine this all right and uh, it, it completes that and there's an option to revert this or close this so let me just close this and see what it says so it says I have refined the steering document uh, to provide comprehensive coding standards that will guide AI assistance in this workspace and key improvements made were that added a proper front matter with inclusion always to ensure these standards apply to all files, structured guidelines across essential areas, code style, architecture, quality testing and so on. So, so it has basically expanded on uh, the, the simple uh, one or two lines that we added. 
to add more details to it. So I'm just going to let it be because I want to see what it does uh, with this particular coding standard steering dock. And let's now close this and try to add some specs over here. All right. So over here, specs are a structured way to build features so you can plan before building and uh, enter your ID to generate requirements, design and task specs. All right. So my idea is going to be a landing page tech website and let's call this the AI language that teaches about new AI tech like agents, model context protocol, agent to agent protocol, agent frameworks, and agentic IDs. So let me specify this and I've specified the details uh, to the extent I could over here. And let me see what it does with this. So as I press enter, it says I'll help you create a spec for a landing page for your AI tech website. Let me start by creating the requirements document based on your idea. So it says I've created the initial requirements document for your AI tech landing page and the requirements focus on creating a modern educational landing page that effectively introduces visitors to AI language technologies, including agents, model context protocol, A to A protocol, agent frameworks and agentic IDEs. So, uh, so these are, this is the requirement part of it. So do the requirements look good? So for now I'm going to say yes. And now we can move to the design phase. So this seems to be structured into its, uh, you know, uh, steps that it's following because there was a specific button to move to design phase over here. So I think the, uh, the Kiro agentic ID has been, you know, programmed or guided in a way to uh, have these multiple stages requirements and then design. So let's wait for the design phase to complete. All right. So it has created a, a design plan for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and say move to the implementation plan. All right, so we've run into our first error. It says an unexpected error occurred. Please retry. So let me just try uh, typing retry this please over here and press enter and let's see what it does. Okay, so now we have the comprehensive implementation plan with 16 main tasks that break down the AI tech landing page. All right, so now it gives me the option to finalize the task list. So I'm not going to go through all these aspects over here. Let us see what it does on autopilot and let's click on finalize task list. All right, so now it works and says the implementation plan is now complete and ready for execution. Your AI tech landing page specs include all this. It says the workflow is complete and you're all set to start building your AI tech landing page. So that's great. So let me just close this chat from here now. And uh, if I go to AI tech landing page over here, I can see that I have requirements. Um, I have design over here and then I have the task list over here and these are all the tasks that are mentioned over here. All right. So to execute these tasks, I can go to the task list over here and I can click on start task. So let's click on start task and this is going to open the chat session again over here and it's going to start uh, task one. So it says I'll implement task one to set up the project foundation and development environment. Let me start by updating the task status and then proceed with the implementation. All right. So there's an unexpected error over here. And let me just say retry this, please. And you get the task status that is being updated over here. All right. So it, it's reading the files tasks.md and requirements and design.md. So again, an error and I'm going to retry this again. Okay, so it's going to start by initializing a react plus TypeScript project with byte. I'm going to say, I'm going to say trust over here. And I think there's an option to accept the command over here. So I need to press this and it's waiting for my input and it's installing everything over here. So it's asking me is okay to proceed. I'll say yes. So I'm going to ask it to update the specs to just use HTML, CSS and JS instead of react and TypeScript. So let's see if it can do that. And uh, we know we can just for the demo, we can actually go ahead and try to implement in that. So it's reading the requirements design and tasks.md file. So we can see these changes showing in the requirements talk over here. All right. So after a lot of, you know, um, updation to all these files, I think it has shifted to now HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So let me now close this chat session over here. Uh, let me close the terminal over here and let's go back to the task list and start retrying the tasks over here. So let me actually go to our file explorer and see if 
there's something being done over here. So this is my AI tech landing page. And I can see some files being created over here. All right, so after a lot of uh, coding over here, Kiro has finally started a web server over here and it has made the first version. So I can actually go and click on this, uh, which is the local host port. And let's, let's ask Kiro to open this. So this is what it has made for us over here. So you have AI agents, model context protocol, agent to agent frameworks, agentic IDs and contact, master the future of AI technologies, AI language technologies. Let's refresh this page to see the starting animation. And this looks pretty amazing, right? So you have the hero section, you have uh, different features over here. So essential areas of modern AI development. And then you have a call to action over here, join thousands of developers and uh, the page design, color scheme, etc., looks pretty good. So when a task is marked completed, it comes in like this in green and uh, you can see view execution or view changes, but we're just going to go to the second task and click on retry over here. And uh, please expect to see this a lot, which is an unexpected error occurred, please retry. And every time this happens, you can either ask it to retry over here or you can close this and click on retry over here. All right, so it's now continuing with task two over here and making edits as it goes along. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just wanted to show how you can actually work with this using the preset specs over here. There's also an option to vibe code your app. So how you would generally do it by typing, you know, create this particular page for me in a chat interface and then it creates it as you go along. The specs option is to actually pre-decide what all you want to do, plan your tasks and then execute them task by task. So that's what we tried over here. You can try this out and let me know in the comments how this works for you. So let's talk about what is not right with Kiro right now, or at least what we, what I think is uh, lacking over here. So one thing is that just it's a new tool and uh, you see a lot of errors happen. So you see this line coming up again and again, which says an, an unexpected error has occurred and please retry and you need to just retry again and again. That's just very, very frustrating. So you can actually, you cannot actually leave it unattended for a long time because uh, you might come back and see that error line over there and, and see, you can see this right now happening over here. So that's one issue. The other thing is the ID itself looks great. I have zoomed in quite a bit to show you more clearly on the screen what all is happening. But if you see over here, you can actually not horizontal scroll over here. So there's no horizontal scrolls to go to, you know, the next part after this. So if you close this, you can then actually see that there's design and task list and update tasks over here. So those are the two issues I have noticed, you know, in a very brief, um, usage of Kiro, but it looks uh, pretty amazing. It works very well just because it uses Claude Sonnet 4.0 uh, and it's available free of charge for us. And the version that I was able to make using this, which is over here, it's much better than what I've seen done with Gemini's code assist because that was wipe coded. And this is, uh, you know, with all the planning that has been done. So that's, that is one difference. But uh, again, uh, the advantage of Kiro is that it actually, you know, guided me to do that. There's an option to very clearly specify the specs over here on the Kiro menu over here. And uh, just because it's available, I, you know, went ahead and defined everything beforehand and then asked it to execute the tasks. So try it out and let me know how it works for you. It looks very promising. And uh, given that Gemini is offering a pretty good free pricing tier right now, it's uh, 60 requests per minute and 1000 requests per day. I think that's with the Gemini CLI as well as the Gemini code assist in VS code. Maybe Kiro follows suit and comes up with a similar free, free tier. So let's see how this goes. Uh, I would say that this is a very promising agentic ID to use, and it would be great to hear what you were able to use it for. What are the things you found good and what are the things that you found lacking? Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.